Hey guys, and CSFan001 here, welcoming you to another one of those weekly trophy list update videos. Today's date is Monday, July 13th, 2020, so this will have covered the week of uh, the 6th through the 12th, I believe that'll be, yeah, 6th through 12th. Anyway, so there is actually quite a bit to talk about this week, even though not all of it is related to trophies, so let's jump right on in. So, as for actual trophies, there were three games where I earned trophies, and one other game that I quickly want to bring up, Destiny 2 again. Actually, I'm not going to scroll all the way down to it, but with Destiny 2, I actually finished the remaining Prophecy tablets, so I did everything on Mercury, which is great, you know, to have all that done. But I'm still missing, I think, like, 13 Legendary and Exotic items from Mars, and most, I think that most of them are Escalation Protocol, which is technically good to know that they come from that. Because I got the ones that are strike specific. I think there's one for completing data recovery. I still need to do that at some point. I don't know why I haven't actually gone and done that one yet. I probably need to find someone to do it though, because it's a little bit easier with multiple people. But anyway, I don't know what's going to happen with the trophies once they remove Mars and Mercury. Like, once they remove Mars and Mercury, actually, you know what, that... I will go down to it because I want to think about this for a second. Uh, I'm going to scroll on down here to Destiny 2. And we can look at the main game too because they're also removing Titan. I think they're removing Titan and something else along with Mars and Mercury. So it wouldn't affect any of these trophies. I guess it wouldn't affect this one either because... Yeah, because Earth and other places will still be there. That one... I, I guess it probably won't affect the main game i don't think it would i don't think losing titan would affect the main game except for you know not being able to maybe what are they going to do with the story like are they going to change the entire campaign i mean i haven't played through the story since you know the month the game came out but it just makes me wonder because obviously these aren't going to be a problem but this is going to screw people out of being able to complete certain collections badges as well as certain triumph seals possibly unless they do something else i don't think this is going to be a problem but i think that all the forsaken exotic quests take you to mars and mercury at some point at least some of them do uh gambit wouldn't be a problem this one shouldn't be a problem either and i mean are they going to take out the raid like i i just don't know like i don't know exactly what it's going to do because i've worked a lot on this triumph seal and i'm only missing really that one those two collections badges i still need to do a lot for the dreaming city and the shore and all, or I don't know if there's any for the shore, but for that one for Forsaken, but that one, at least I would still be able to do it, but I, I just don't know, guys, like, I don't know what they're going to do with the game, I don't know how they're going to change up the trophies and stuff, so it, it's going to be interesting, like, I don't know what they're going to be able to do, because I don't really want to have to start over on a Triumph Seal, and I don't know if maybe you could then make a complaint to them that they need to make the ones possible that were already there. I don't know what you could say to them about it or what you could possibly do about it, but it's something to think about. So you might want to focus on getting that stuff done sooner rather than later, just in case. And hopefully no more new trophies come up. So for the actual games I worked on this week, Grand Theft Auto V, we popped a trophy from the Heist DLC. So for the Heist DLC, there are, I guess, 10 trophies like normal. Uh, is it 10 trophies? Yeah, probably. 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, nine. Oh, it's 9, okay. So, for this DLC, complete any heist setup mission that's unmissable. These are for completing the remaining heists. I have not done Series A funding, and I have not done Humane Labs. And I have not done Pacific Standard. Fleck a job is, or Fleece a job is the very first one. I don't know why it's not a separate trophy instead of the Prison Break one, because that doesn't really make sense. Just have the Prison Break and the third heist as a trophy, then the fourth and fifth. Uh, are these all bronzes? Yeah, they are bronze. Uh, so, I mean, completing the heist isn't too terribly difficult if you have, like, a good coordinated team that knows what they're doing and has some good weapons and vehicles and stuff. It's just basically impossible to do with randoms just because you're going to constantly have people leaving if you fail once and they don't have communication. You don't know exactly what you're going to do, so it can be a bit of a problem doing it that way. Uh, set up a heist. That's pretty easy. Then, as a heist leader, set the finale cut as 25%. This one's extremely easy if you're playing it with a cooperative, you know, online group. 
because each player could set each high each player could head up one heist and get all the trophies done uh it's a little bit tougher to do with randoms but i did do it with randoms i think so that's good that they didn't leave i did it for the prison break of course and the trophy i earned was to spend a total of eight million dollars purchasing vehicles from the heist dlc this is actually fairly easy because what you can do is you can buy a vehicle such as specifically the armored karuma and then just go resell it. It costs you around 525,000 to buy it, but then you can resell it for around 345. So yes, you're losing nearly $200,000 in profits each time, but you're getting at least some of your money back. That's the easiest way to do it because it requires far less money. Unless you just have a huge surplus of money and want to buy some of the cool stuff from the Heist DLC. If so, go ahead and do it that way. Nothing's stopping you. But do keep that in mind that that is the easiest way to do that trophy and the cheapest way to do it. And then, of course, GTA is doing that monthly login for a day and you will get $1 million. Even though they're really slacking on the July one, it still hasn't come in for most people. Then this one's very easy. You can do it in the Fleece of Job. As long as you're the driver, I don't really think that there's... It's pretty easy to get through without taking damage. The Platinum Medals you get by like doing the most important or best job in a high setup or finale. And I've currently got 23. You can very easily farm these by replaying the Fleece of Job. So I'll probably have this done by the time I eventually finish the other heists. If not, then I can just farm it in like an hour or less. Nothing difficult there. Uh, Rockstar Editor has been done for forever. It's almost entirely offline, but you do have to go online as a, as your, uh, or you have to enter director mode as a GTA Online character. But I mean, that's very easy. So that DLC is pretty easy. I did it. When did I do this one? Yeah, 2016, uh, April of 2016. So it's been a very long time. And I did the whole thing in like two days. So it's, it's easy. The Doomsday Heist is where things get a little bit more dicey. You have to set up the heist. Then you have to complete all of Act 1. Now, actually, I don't know if you just have to complete the finale of these heists or if you have to complete the entire thing. I assume you have to complete the entire thing. That would make the most sense. Now, why is Act 2 more heavily complete than Act 1? That doesn't make any sense. What? Okay, so yeah, complete the entire Doomsday Heist for all of these trophies, especially if you set it up. Uh, but then you have to kill another player with the orbital cannon, which just costs a lot of money, and it's best done if you boost it with someone. Just make sure you have a friend that'll be happy enough to stand somewhere and get obliterated. That's by far the best way to do it, so you don't have to worry about, you know, wasting money. Uh, these are the really difficult trophies in GTA V. These are the only trophies that are above, like, a 4-ish out of 10, is completing the Elite Challenges and the Criminal Mastermind Challenges, because they're basically, like, completing all of the missions in well no not the setups i don't think the setups actually count or i'm not 100 percent sure about that but it's basically you have to complete all the heist finales like in a row with the same group on with two people then three people then four people and you can't die in any of them it's just a whole ridiculous thing i will someday finish every trophy through here i will someday finish them hopefully by the end of the year actually i'm sort of thinking about going back to doing it by the end of the year but those last two i just don't know if that's ever going to happen i don't know if it's not as much lacking the skill or the ability to find a group although i'm certainly not that great of a gta player i don't have the patience to deal with that kind of crap because that's like i mean, it's not like my leaving level but it's a little reminiscent of that almost like permadeath Anyway, Star Wars Battlefront 2. We have only one trophy left in the base game, which is pretty awesome. So this week, I mainly focused on finishing the story. So I finished Undercovered Skies, Cash Grab, Battle of Jakku, Until Ashes, and Discovery. So those were the last five main story missions. So how many story missions were there in the base game? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8... 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. So there were 13 total story missions in the main game. Some of them are very short. They're mostly pretty easy. I actually did struggle just a little bit with, I think it was maybe this one, Undercovered Skies, because like you have to fight past an ATST at the very end and fight off a huge number of enemies to get to a cloud car. I think that's the mission this was. That gave me trouble, but I also was playing on medium difficulty instead of easy, so there's that. 
But I mean, the campaign is very easy overall. You can play it on the easiest difficulty if you want. The medium difficulty is only tough in a couple areas. Hard difficulty is probably a little bit tougher, but it's not required for anything, thankfully. Uh, but just complete the 13 story missions and you'll get all of these trophies. So that's really simple. And you can beat the campaign in probably like four hours. It's not particularly long, four to five hours at most. Now, you do have four miscellaneous trophies in the campaign, which I had already earned two of them. This one's very easily done in the first level, the prologue, the cleaner. Uh, just use the droid to shock three enemies at once, but there's plenty of other places to get it when enemies group up. That's not going to be a problem for anyone. Uh, eliminating a scout trooper with Eden's melee takedown. That is best done on the mission, the storm, which is the fifth mission in the game. It's best done there because there's a very easy opportunity to do it while you're sneaking away in the second half of the mission. So that one's pretty easy as well. Destroying eight starfighters in the skies of Jakku. I'm not even sure you can miss this trophy, but maybe I can... No, people have been missing it because that... That's really surprising that people actually miss that because I'm pretty sure you have to shoot down like around eight of them to even forward the game in that area. So I don't know, but I'm, I'm surprised that people would miss that because that's a super easy trophy. That's not going to really cause any issues. And then this one right here, Balance Point, this is the hardest of the four miscellaneous trophies, five enemies at once using the Barrage. Just because I wasn't getting favorable enemy spawns, but it's best done on the Battle of Endor, that's the suggestion. I don't know if there's a better mission. I also went through and found all the collectibles, just because I'm a little bit of an overachiever and just wanted to see if I got anything special for it. You just, I think you just get some, uh, like some credits and stuff for doing it, but that's about it. But hey, you know, that's okay. It was... It was just a little extra thing, plus it completed all the milestones for the single player, which is kind of cool, except for the ones for Resurrection. Now, as for the other trophies, the only trophy I'm currently missing, I don't think I got any multiplayer trophies this week, right? Yep, no multiplayer trophies this week. Just grinding out the final trophy here of reaching rank 50. I am currently a rank 37, so I am making great progress on that. Uh, probably like two to three more weeks of only playing on Wednesday and a little bit on, or playing some on Wednesday and some on the weekends. I don't know exactly how much which days, but soon enough I will be able to get through this Platinum. It's not really that hard now that you can do every so much of the multiplayer and co-op. That makes so much, makes the game so much easier. Because I mean, just winning a match of each game mode isn't a problem, but you'll get the multiplayer milestones along the way as long as you're switching around classes and characters a little bit. Uh, you can do the ranking up in the co-op. You can do these four class-specific trophies in co-op. You can't do these three trophies. Actually, there's technically four Starfighter Assault trophies. You can't do those in the co-op mode, unfortunately. So you're going to have to do those legitimately. Arcade match and battle scenarios isn't a problem. That doesn't take a lot of time. It's not very difficult. You can This one you have to do in the online, but it's very easy. Then this one and... Uh, this one, you can also do both of those in the co-op mode. So you can do a lot of the tough trophies in co-op, but you still have to do the Starfighter Assault ones online. But as I've said before, if you play the Hero Starfighters mode, that's the easiest way to get the fighter ship kills on hero ships. The dual proton torpedoes is a little more annoying than I thought it would be, but it's not too bad. The interceptor kill streaks and the objectives are very easy. And then, of course, I think I've talked about this before, but Resurrection, all you have to do to earn, is it three bronze trophies? Yep, three easy bronze trophies. Simply complete the three extra DLC missions. The DLC is free. Complete those missions, and you get three easy trophies and your 100% completion. So I'll probably do that this week. And finally, we have Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order. This game, again, it's pretty good, but I do feel like there are a few things to, that are fair to criticize that were not done as well. One of them is the sliding and rope jumping sections because they just don't control well. I really do not enjoy those. The second thing is the game has a lot of collectibles to find, which, I mean, it's not difficult for the most part with a guide, but it is just quite extensive on the number of collectibles you have to find overall it's like over 250 or i think it's like right around 250 or so so it's quite a few collectibles and quite a bit of backtracking the third bad thing is the map that map is not very well made they certainly didn't need to have everything overlay as much as it did they could have made that better so i mean i would say that overall i'd probably give this game around like a 7 out of 10 if you're into soulsborne type of games as this kind of is designed to be that way you're probably going to like it even more. You're going to like it less if you're not a Star Wars fan, but I am a Star Wars fan. 
So yeah, I'd give it like a 7 to 8 out of 10. I wouldn't go any higher than an 8 out of 10, though. I think that when the inevitable sequel comes out, they'll be able to make things even better in it. They'll be able to fix some of the flaws with this one. And the other thing about it is... Now, this might not be the fault of the game. This might be the fault of the copy that I have because it's a disc that I got from Gamefly. So it's possible that it could be something with the disc. But there have been quite a few places where the game was really lagging and chugging along. It hasn't crashed or anything, but the loading screens are really long. So just a few simple things they could end up fixing in the sequel that can make the sequel a solid 9 or 10 out of 10 of a game. As for the trophies, though, I got this one. These are the ram-looking enemies. They're not too hard to deal with. Another funny thing is I played all the way up until the second sister fight without knowing that you could lock on to enemies with R3, and boy would that have helped at times before that, and it made a huge difference later in the game, which is kind of hilarious that I didn't know that. So that's just on me for not following instructions. You have to find all the chests and secrets, which is basically for completing all the maps, which are going to come for other trophies. Defeating the four mysterious creatures, I think they're the ones that have specific red health bars, like one in each world or something. And if that's what it is, then I know where the last one is, and I'm surprised I never killed it. I think it's the albino spider thing on Kashyyyk. All the Jedi skills, I currently have one skill left, and I need two more skill points to afford it. So that's not a big deal. The hollow maps is basically filling out all the maps, which definitely takes quite a bit of time, but it's not really, like, a difficult thing to do overall. Uh, then all of these trophies are for completing the story, I believe. Or, this one's not for completing the story, but you'll get it along the way with doing all of the secrets and the chests. But everything through here will be story-related, so those are all going to unlock through natural progression, nothing to worry about. By the way, you can play this game on the easiest difficulty. That's what makes the Platinum fairly easy. I've made it a little more difficult on myself by playing on the second easiest difficulty, so gave myself a little bit more of a challenge. Even for someone who's not experienced with this kind of game, it's not very difficult for the most part. There were only a couple of areas that were actually challenging, mainly the, not the final boss fight, but the boss fight further through Dathomir, I believe it is. He was, uh, he was a little bit tougher than I was expecting, but that, again, I was on the, not the easiest difficulty, and I think he is considered to be the hardest boss anyway. Uh, 50 enemies with reflected blaster bolts is very easy, you'll probably get this naturally. Parrying 100 enemies is when you hit square to block the attacks, nothing too difficult there. This one I just need to go for, it's not hard, you can do it against the regular stormtroopers, and you can get these trophies in the battle simulator thing that you can access from the resting points, which is really nice. Three enemies with a single lightsaber throw. Again, you can do it against regular stormtroopers. I did it in that battle setup mode. That's the easiest way to do a lot of these trophies because you can set up a nice wide open arena with exactly whichever enemies you want. It definitely makes things a little bit easier. I'm really glad you don't have to finish all the challenges either because that would be awful or it would be very, very difficult. Uh, then you have to defeat an enemy with a slowed blaster bolt. I feel like I should have gotten this by now, but I guess I haven't. Maybe I'm doing something wrong with it. This one, I don't know exactly what the best place to get this on because I can't imagine I've done too much with it. This one's pretty tough to miss. Just hack any droid and have them kill something else like the security droids, the big ones that look like the one from Rogue One. Precision evading 100 attacks. I think that this is a different kind of evade from what I've been doing. Like if you just hit circle instead of circle with the control stick to roll. If so, I'm going to have to farm this for a little while in the battle simulator, most likely. It's not hard, but it's going to take some time to farm. And I'm not done with the collectibles yet, either. I still have to do the entirety of Kashyyyk. I can't remember if I finished uh, Zephro or not. I finished the planet that starts with a B. I finished Dathomir. I haven't done the ice planet, either, but I'm close to being done with it. 25 enemies over a ledge. Just force push them off. Nothing difficult there. Uh, this one I have been working on in the challenge mode. It's pretty easy if you do it that way because you just hold R1 and then kill them. Uh, this one's pretty tough to miss. You're probably going to get it by accident at some point. Uh, this one, there's only three lightsaber types, so just hit like a tougher enemy. I did it on like the Ogden Vago or whatever it's called and hit it with each type of lightsaber. Pretty easy. This one, I found out like you have to actually slow time and pull the tongue with the force or something to do it. It's a little more complicated than it should be. The stem canisters, I've got 8 of the 10. Well, 8 of... I'm at 8 total when you can have up to 10, and then I've still got to get 2 more. I think they're both on Kashyyyk. 
The terrarium is a little bit trickier for some people. It was buggy when the game came out. You have to find 10 seeds and then plant them on the ship. And they take a little bit of time to grow, so you want to try to find the seeds along the way as you play through the game. Just get all of them as soon as you get them, like as soon as you possibly can, and then take them back and they'll all be grown by the time you finish everything. Uh, this one's pretty easy because there's... There's only two that you get throughout the course of the game. Like, one of them's story-related, and one of them is pretty easy to get early in the game. The encrypted logs are another collectible type. Fully customizing your lightsaber just means change all the parts. Very easy. Customize the looks. Again, just change parts out. Very easy. Uh, I'm currently only missing two enemies. They're both on Kashyyyk, which is fine, because I still haven't even come close to finishing it yet. The bounty hunters, I believe there's three of them, and I believe it's basically impossible to miss this, because they start attacking you all the time when you're exploring looking for collectibles and the force echoes this is a good thing because you don't actually have to find all of them and there's well over a hundred layers like 125 of them or something but you only have to find 75 and power picks has guides for all of these collectibles on his website so that's what i've been following for it so overall pretty solid game i've enjoyed it a lot it's not too difficult it's not overly time consuming and i'm getting closer to being done with it maybe i'll be done by the end of this week i don't know yet so, with that, level 75, 73%, 18,729 total trophies, 450 platinums, 2,619 golds, 4,915 silvers, 10,745 bronzes. So, plans for the upcoming week, as well as streaming stuff. So, this is stuff that needs to be discussed. Uh, this coming week, I am going to be away. I'm going to be at the beach with some people, and it's going to be a lot of fun, so I don't know exactly what the schedule is going to look like with anything from videos and streaming, because we're leaving on Monday, so this will go up probably a little bit later on Monday. And then Tuesday, of course, is the 10-year channel anniversary, and I don't have my camera with me, or I won't be taking my camera with me, so uh, it won't be a face-to-face -face video, which is really unfortunate, because I would have liked for it to be that way. But I'll try to make the one with the comments, uh, the Q&A video. It might not come out for an extra week, but then I can at least do it with, you know, actually showing my face, you know? Uh, you guys deserve that. It's 10 years. It's, it's a crazy milestone. Like, even if it's just a time-based milestone, it's still a crazy milestone. In the last couple of years, the channel's grown. Like, I'm pretty sure I've, like, doubled my subscribers from where I was, like, two years ago at this point. I'm pretty sure I've, like, doubled it. Thanks heavily to streaming and the trophy list updates, which is pretty cool. And then we might also get the trophy list for Ghost of Tsushima this week. I'm surprised that it hasn't come out yet or been revealed. So probably that'll be a video. There'll be a platinum trophy video this week, of course. Uh, I don't know when the next challenge run will be. It might not be until like a couple weeks from now because I got to edit the Fallout. Next one's a Fallout 3 run. So as for streaming, as you guys may know, I am running into even more issues with streaming. I tried to stream on Saturday night for the one drunk stream of the week, and it did not work at all. It just completely stopped working after like 20 minutes, which is absolutely ridiculous. Uh, unfortunately, Elgato wasn't really able to help. Like, they told me some things to do, and I'm going to take any advice that they have. They're, they're good guys. Like, they have good customer service and all, so I can't can't fault them there because, you know, they're, they can only do so much because they're not the ones actually here working on it. So, I mean, they can only do so much, and I appreciate what they have done with trying to help me, but I just don't know if it's quite going to be enough to fix everything. Uh, what I'm going to do, though, is I have a list of different things I can try to figure everything out. And also, when I'm going to be at the beach, I have a different internet connection there that I think might be just as good or better than the one I have here. So I can test streaming on that, and if it were to work there properly, then that would mean that I know for a fact it's something with my internet here, most likely being throttled by Spectrum, because my typical upload speed is 15 to 20 megabits per second if you test it at any given time. But when I start streaming, it mysteriously drops at some point to about 1 megabit per second. So, yeah, I'm pretty sure that they're screwing with me because this didn't happen in Cincinnati even on this capture card. But I do, like I said, I have a few different options that I can look into for trying to find some fixes. So, I actually did do a stream earlier today or earlier on Sunday that was private, just playing Fallen Order. And it only screwed up once and it didn't actually drop frames during the screw up. It just lagged a little bit. But that was all done in private, and I lowered the settings a bit. 
So what I'm probably going to do, uh, I'm going to test with the internet at the other place. That'll give me a good chance to check uh, if it's the internet or not. So that's one thing. Then I might be able to change like graphic settings on the PS4. I don't really know if that matters though. I'm not, I was going to try to go private for like an hour and then go public, but I don't think that's going to work because I saw that I was still having issues even in private. So I'm not going to bother with that one anymore because that's not a fix anymore. I guess they, something caught on to it. Uh, otherwise, I want to test while using an Ethernet cable at some point because my PS4 has an Ethernet cable hooked up, but my computer, my laptop isn't hooked up to the Ethernet. And they were saying from the Elgato people that it could be just the fact that my computer doesn't have the right specs, even though that doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me because it worked pretty well for the first like year that I had the capture card, which makes me wonder. And the other thing I'm going to do is I may just lower the settings on my capture card down to only record in like 720 HD or something. I know it's not as good, but if that works, then at the very least it works and it doesn't crash the stream, then I'm perfectly fine with that. It's better than nothing until I can eventually get a better laptop that can actually handle the higher quality streaming setups. Uh, maybe it would be a PC, but it probably would be a laptop because then I can, you know, take it with me. So that's the whole streaming situation right now. Thank you guys for being patient with that. But thank you guys for tuning into this video regardless. I know I managed to drag this one out a little bit. So like I said, this week is going to be a little bit weird with the trophies I earn and with scheduling and stuff. But it's going to be a fun week for me. And of course, celebrating the 10 year anniversary of the YouTube channel is also pretty awesome. So... Thank you guys for tuning in. Thank you guys for 10 years. There will be some kind of video up that day. It might not be super long because, again, I won't have, like, face cam for it or anything. But I do hope you guys enjoy whatever comes out this week. And I do hope I can get the streaming issues worked out. So, once again, thank you guys for tuning in and for the 10 years. And I will see you guys this week.